I grew up in Texas and Kansas when I was younger, and that was exciting. Then we had the opportunity to come back to Utah, to Heber City, uh, where I, I grew up. And we were in this farmland of Heber City, this old town, where my dad had just gotten a new job as a young nurse anesthetist. And I, I remember I loved animals. I loved animals. I wanted a horse. I wanted a dog. I wanted anything that, that moved, that had four legs, and that was fuzzy. I just was an animal kid. I, when I was younger, I was obsessed with the circus. Uh, I come from a family of all boys. Most people grow up going to Disneyland or the girls because the princesses and Disney movies. Not -uh. For me, my, my brothers, it was the circus. Uh, my grandpa loved the circus. I remember the first experience with grandpa watching him ride an elephant in the circus because uh, he was a part of the city council and they brought him in and put him on an elephant. And I remember being under the big top and watching grandpa, who was a hero of mine, Grandpa Willie, on top of an elephant and, and the lions and the atmosphere and the tigers and the monkeys and the acrobats and the, the music and the, the peanuts and the popcorn and just that world. It was so cool. And so I did grew, I grew up wanting to run away with the circus. One of my heroes was Gunther Gable Williams, who was uh, one of the greatest animal trainers in the world. And uh, then I found out that I had, uh, I had uh, allergies. I went over to my grandma's house who had a dog and one day I broke out and I was itchy, I was sneezing everywhere, had hives all up my arms and I couldn't breathe. All of a sudden my lungs started shutting off. And so at the young age, I think I was uh, maybe around eight or nine, maybe even younger, I, I was diagnosed with asthma and allergies to animals. And it wasn't just like, horses or cats, any animal, any animal with fur. So, so dogs, horses, cats, uh, ferrets, guinea pigs, anything with fur, I was allergic to it. And that was just another devastating, like, oh my gosh, uh, great. Here's a love and a passion and uh, I couldn't do it. And I think in my life, I've seen, and you'll see through some of the other stories that I, I share that, that Heavenly Father has put up roadblocks in my life and it's roadblock after roadblock because I'm the kind of person that that I I, uh, I, I, I persist and I, I go and I'm determined and so it literally takes a roadblock from Heavenly Father uh, to course correct me to to make it so that I, I can't do it anymore because either a physical element or or a mental element or uh, whatever it may be, uh, that I can't, I can't do it anymore. But through that, he knows that I will then just deviate and go and f do something else. And so I couldn't be an animal trainer. I couldn't, I wanted to be a vet. I couldn't do that now because I had allergies. And, uh, and so we found out though, we went to a, a state fair in Kansas and there was a guy there that had a bunch of llamas. And I remember looking at him and he looked at me and I, I wanted to go pet the llama and my mom said no. And the guy said, why not? And he said, well, because my son's deathly allergic to animals. And the guy said, not llamas. He's like, llamas, they don't have any lanolin in their fur. They don't have any dander and they work for people with allergies. And I said, no way. And so I sat on the back of this llama and I had no problems. And, uh, that was the first time we, ex we experienced and discovered that I wasn't allergic to llamas. And so out of all the animals in the world, uh, the llama is the one that works for Clint. And so I found, for me, that was my first love and passion as a young kid when I found out that I could have a llama. I could have an animal. And it wasn't like a snake or a reptile or a bird. Like it was, a, it was an animal. It was like a real animal with fur and it, I just it was a cool thing for me and so I I worked my butt off I worked on the raspberry farms I worked on the dairy farms I I mowed lawns I did everything that I could do at a young age to save up my pennies to buy my first llama and my grandpa my grandpa Willie was uh, a huge instrumental part in me getting my llama. every time I saw my grandpa he knew how much I wanted this he knew how hard I was working and he would always slip me $20 bills and that's how I saved up eventually for my first llama. 
and his name was Miko. And I'll never forget that day, Carol Beathers was the lady that sold them to us. And I was a part of the 4-H uh, club. It was called the Llama Lovers Club. I know, I know, the Llama Lovers Club. And, uh, but for a young kid at that time, big deal. Like, I loved it. I had a shirt. I had my own llama. And I was living the dream. And I taught Miko how to lay down and tricks and how to perform. And we did llama obstacle courses with them. And we just, that was a, such a fun experience. And, and Jaron, my younger brother, he wasn't able to have pets either because of me. And so my parents ended up buying him a llama too. So we had Miko and Paco and they were both brothers. Jaron and I were brothers. And so it was kind of a fun thing. And we raised these llamas and uh, we would take them um, sledding out in the backyard. We'd attach a, a snow sled to them and we'd, we'd get them to pull us in the sled. And I don't know, we just did so many fun things with the, with the llamas. And that was a great experience and fun experiences changing the sprinklers uh, where the llamas lived because that was we got free land to put the llamas on as long as we would change the sprinklers. And so me and my brothers, uh, we grew up with my dad changing sprinklers uh, so that we could keep the llamas in the pen. And then my dad raised pigeons, and so I raised pigeons as well. I had the weirdest pets because that's all I could have. So we had quail and chuckers and turkeys and pheasants and uh, different different types of birds. We had uh, little bunny rabbits for a while. We had turtles, we had lizards, we had frogs, we had fish. Anything that I could have um, with my allergies, we had it. And uh, the raising pigeons was another fun thing. I competed with them. I raised Birmingham rollers, uh, which would do backflips in the air, and uh, competed with them and had so many great experiences and memories with that. I also did falconry, and so I had a pet falcon and passed the test and had a mentor falconer uh, uh, who taught me how to falcon, uh, how to do falconry, how to falcon, how to do falconry. And so I worked with birds of prey and trained them. So I guess in a way I kind of was, was sort of kind of became like Gunther Gable Williams, my old animal trainer hero. Uh, but that was some of the funnest memories was growing up in the country out in Heber, uh, raising animals, and just kind of having that country life growing up. I loved it.